Okay. So for this case, right, for double shear configuration, the shear stress is equal to P divided by what? Twice the what? The area. Okay. So again, the area is a cross-sectional area of the bolt. So for this case, why twice? Because it will either fail, the load is either failing there or failing there. Okay, where so you can see two highlighted yellow regions. So uh, you have a double uh, uh, region where the load can fail. Okay, and it's withstanding the shear stress at twice the area. Now, looking at our structure now, okay, let's look at our structure. What we see over here, right? Our boat over this is our boat. Right? So now my question is to you is this single shear or double shear configuration? Anyone? Right, I, will, I, will, I know this is the first time you are looking at this. So single. yeah, double shear. Okay, so this is this is a a, a, a double shear configuration problem. Okay, you're absolutely right, right? You can you can see the similarity, right? You have one plate down here, right? You have one plate down here, one plate down here, one plate down here, three plates, right? So likewise, you have one plate down here, one plate down here, one plate down here. So we have a, we have a double shear configuration. Okay, we have a double shear configuration. So now, how this beam will fail, right? So I'm going to look into failure mode. Let's look into failure mode. So we're going to look at failure mode, uh, three possible. Failure mode of the structure, right? Can anyone tell me what are the three or, or two, the most obvious two? What are they? Anyone? So number one is what? Due to the joints, yes or no, right? So number one can be uh, shear failure, right? Shear failure. of the fastener and this is controlled by 600 pounds of single shear and 6 inch spacing of the fastener am i right we have this value yes or no right okay why is mode number two anyone fastener pull out that is already number one what's the second one material failure yeah well done material material um at the mid beam you're right okay so the next failure can be due to uh, can be can be due to shear failure. Yeah, shear failure. Of the wooden structure, and this is controlled. By the uh, shear loudable, which is equal to three times ten about three psi. Okay, three.
And the third failure, which I have not taught you yet, okay, after your first term test, we are going to it, is going to be failure due to normal stress. Induced by the bending moment. Okay. By the bending moment. And this is going to be controlled by the normal stress allowable that was given which is equal to 8 times 10 to the power 3 PSI. Okay. Right. So as I said, we, we, we are not going to look at 3 yet because I've not taught you, uh, I've not taught you bending moment yet. I just uh, have taught you shearing stress. So we, we do shearing stress first. After your term test, then we go into uh, bending moment. Okay. So also given, right, also given is our I, is equal to 2902 inch to power 4. Actually, it's not given this question, but I don't, I don't want to waste time on this, okay? So based on our configuration, sorry, this will be IZZ. So IZZ, so this is equal to 2902 inches to power 4, right? And we know based on observation, at this position I've drawn down here, this is our centroid. Okay, this is our centroid. So let's look at mode one. Okay, let's look at mode one. Okay, mode one. So failure due to the fastener. Okay. So there, there is our, our mode one. So we realize that Q, right? So we are going to use the formula that we, that we have written earlier, where Q Right, is the resistance force of the joints divided by the bolt spacing of the uh, of, of the bolt? Okay, so this will be equal to six hundred divided by six, multiplied by two. You multiply by two over here is because of what the what. The double shear carried out by the bolt. Okay. Okay. So over here, you will have 600 divided by 6 times 2. You have 200 pound per inch. Okay. And this we know will be equal to VQ over I, right? So we don't know what is our shear force yet. So if we look at our shear force, next we consider our free body diagram, right? Based on free body diagram to find a shear force. And I'll still construct the shear force diagram, okay? So the beam. If we look at the beam, I'm just assuming at point A and at point B, okay, I'm just assuming now that they're both on rollers. I have not a clue if the bottom beam is nailed there or not. I'm just going to assume that it's on rollers. If that's the case, this is our AY. And over here, this is our BY. And then we have our P, okay? So we're going to apply static analysis.
So by applying our static analysis, we know that everything that's going up, some measure of forcing the y is equal to zero. So we have ay plus by by minus p is equal to zero. Note due to symmetrical loading and geometry. We can state that AY is equal to BY. So therefore, 2AY is equal to P. AY is equal to P over 2. And this is also equal to BY. Okay. So now we construct our shear force diagram. If you Sorry, have a question. Eugene. Yes. Yeah. I missed why um, there's no uh, force in the x direction. Why you have it shown as if the free body diagrams on rollers? Yeah, because I did. So you can see from the diagram over here, right? That this part and this part, how is joined to the top part? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to assume it. If they just put it on top and it's allowed to move left and right, it just cannot go down. Okay. Okay. So that's assumption. That's assumption that I make. Okay. Right. Even you. even though even though that uh, if one is a pin, the other one is a roller, is still no forces in the x direction, right? Yeah. Okay. So for now, I don't know. Okay. I just make that assumption. So all the assumption that you make in your analysis has to be made known to to like at the end of the day, as engineers, what we do is like when when you are doing consulting and when you are calculating the load on the deck, right? You're going to show a professional engineer or the city of Burlington, Hamilton, Oakville, Toronto, the deck that we design. And whatever you design, this is like telling them a story, right? When we're doing the, the calculation, you're telling them a story. Okay, so that's where I, I put down here. Okay, we're going to assume A and B are on rollers, so I'm going to assume that. And then the, 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 the city were, or the authorizing or the chief engineer that goes through your calculation know what you, are, what you are calculating because there's not always an opportunity that you can go down there and explain. So this has okay. to be made very clear. Am I right? Right? All right. Thank you. Okay. So someone asked me, where is the IZZ from? Okay. So IZZ, so if you draw this configuration over here, so this is Y. This is Z, rotation of Z. So this is your what? ZZ axis. So that's where your IZZ is from. Is that clear? Okay. Right. So that is your... So I'm going to draw my shearing force. Right. So this is my V. So this is zero. This is, uh, uh, is it six feet or four? So this is four, 48, four times just 48. And then this will be my 96 inches. So you have uh, P over two going this way, coming down to minus P over two. And then you do this and you go, go back in. Okay. So we have identified that V max is equal to P over 2. Okay. You identified that V max is equal to P over 2. So from here, the formula we're, that we're trying to use is shear stress or Q, which we have calculated. So the Q we have calculated is equal to 200. Then next is equal to V over I multiplied by what? Q. Okay. Right. So rule that we apply, that we always state that both of these are what? Constant. Right. The next is what is our, what is our Q now? Okay. So the confusing or the thing now that's critical, what is the Q value or how to calculate Q?
Right. So we take this diagram again. Right. 